Is it more cost effective to grow your own quality organic food or to buy it from a grocery store or farmer's market? Hi, I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. If you're a high income professional or an entrepreneur, you're already very busy and you understand that agriculture is also like a full time job. And unless you have a certain size garden, you may not be able to grow the quantity of food to have the quality of food that you deserve. And there's some challenges here that I'm going to help you address with permaculture design. First off, if we're looking at the value of your time, very often if markets are available or partnerships in your community are available, a high-income professional, that's somebody with an every hour rate of $12 to $15 an hour, that means your total income divided by the total number of hours you have available, uh, if that hourly rate is is higher than minimum wage, then you, you may not have a profitable opportunity to grow fruits and vegetables. If you have to buy gro- uh, plants from the grocery store, for example, or a big box store, you could be paying 3 to $4 a plant that only produces 3 or $4 of vegetables. And ultimately, there's a certain scale that's necessary to have the volume you need for your home. Now, let's get this, this straight. Growing your own food, zero mile food, is always better for the planet in the long run. There's no carbon required to transport the vegetables from uh, field to market. There's very little food waste because any vegetables that don't make it to your table can make it to your compost pile and go back to feed your plants. There's the health benefit of gardening, uh, getting out there in, in the fresh air and working in the soil. You not only have the health benefit in a mental capacity, but you also have the physical value of gardening. Uh, you also have the variety of foods you can grow at your home, foods that would not normally be available in the grocery store. You can also grow, in some cases, the quantity of food that you might enjoy over a period of freshness, meaning you don't have to dig up all your potatoes at once to have regular potatoes. You don't have to uh, pick all your corn or you don't have to have uh, the the pumpkins can come out once at a t- one at a time. Now, here's the important factor here. If you're looking at just the time value perspective of gardening, a high income professional doing the work themselves will actually be in a position where they're losing money on every vegetable harvested. Now, this is very important to remember. Let's say you have a $15 an hour every hour rate. Again, that's all your earnings divided by all of your time. And you're out in the garden for 10 hours a week. Now, you might enjoy the garden. You might be getting uh, health benefits. You may have a, a family interaction that's quality. You may have other value, but you have to understand those vegetables are going to cost more than the marketplace. I was working with a local farmer, and we were talking about the cost of a chicken. So we were they were selling chickens in the marketplace. I was volunteering with SCORE, and we looked at the cost of a single chicken. Now, they had a small operation with about 10 or 15 chickens, and they were looking at a, a finished production costs for a broiler at $25 a bird. You can go to the grocery store today and you can buy a chicken. And if that's what the customer is looking for, a chicken, you can get a chicken for five bucks. Now that takes, that doesn't take into consideration all the hormones they have to pump that chicken up with, all the farm subsidies that made possible that $5 chicken, uh, all the f- flash freezing and, and sitting in a warehouse and being shipped, all the health values and all the the drawbacks of that $5 chicken doesn't make it easier for a consumer to buy a $5 chicken or to buy a $25, a $25 chicken. It, it just basically, they're going to go money first and they're going to get the, the cheap chicken. Now, the $25 chicken is a better quality chicken. I've since bought uh, farm-raised chickens from $14 to $25 finished bird. It's a heavier bird. The price per pound is maybe a dollar or two higher than what the grocery store would be. Uh, but I know all in, it's a better bird. It's better quality. It's, it's a good value for what I'm getting. So if you're a high income professional entrepreneur, your time is very valuable. Uh, from a monetary standpoint, your time and attention might also be valuable from you don't get to spend a lot of time with family. You may want to look instead at a larger garden or even agricultural space where you can hire staff to come in and do the work. And now listen carefully. If minimum wage is 7.25 an hour, 
and your every hour rate is $15 an hour and you hire somebody to help with the heavy lifting, turning compost, uh, preparing beds, harvesting, you're actually going to have a net benefit of nearly $7 per hour of work while you still get the uh, non monetary benefit of being able to go out and just enjoy the garden space. Now, this sounds a bit like the the gentleman farmer, the the, the landholder who hires serfs and 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 has tenant labor uh, and uh, you know hiring no illegal immigrants to do the work. Uh, all of that is context on top of an underlying importance that if you value your time and you utilize monetary resources to provide a livelihood, such as health insurance for your family, such as uh, a means for your family to have long-term uh, care, then you have to look at the, the, the financial side. You have to say, look, if I focus my time on the garden, will I be able to, to serve other things? Now, there's a more complex factor that we cover in coaching where we do talk about you, the, the need to lower your expenses, the need to lower the maintenance the, the, the design factors that help make the garden part of your everyday activity because there are garden designs that don't require a lot of inputs, that don't require you to be out there every day. My grass-fed garden method that we're, that we're using here at Prosperity Homestead actually uh, has so few weeds and maintenance elements that all I simply do is get plants from a greenhouse or I get plants from a local nursery and I, I put them in the ground and then I prune them, and then I harvest. That's pretty much it. There's no tilling. There's no bed preparation. There's no uh, adding amendments. There's nothing other than the simple cycle of growth, harvest, and plant. Now, you can do that on a scale. Now, I'm doing it on a, on a scale that's much larger than my neighbors would like and much longer than my community will allow. And we're going to make some changes that I'll announce here soon uh, to, to make uh, to to get to the scale that's necessary to make it monetary time value. But you want to lay out these factors in advance because there will be days when you're out there digging holes and you're out there planting plants and you're out there getting sweaty and the work is going to start to back up. So can you hire laborers to help you with the heavy lifting? I was talking to a guy this morning who's going to help me come out and do some home repairs and we're going to uh, thin out some plants and finish some straw uh, areas uh, because I, I'm not physically able to do it. I'm, I'm not physically able to do it by myself. I'm not physically, as far as time constraints, able to do it. And ultimately, if those projects are not done within the seasons, they're not going to come out the way we expect it. So let me summarize some points here. If you're going to grow and, and have more quality food at your home, you must consider in your design how much time you can dedicate to managing and maintaining things. You don't want to get chickens if you're not going to be able to get out and feed them every morning. Uh, in my case, I have fish ponds. I don't have to get out and feed the fish every morning. You just feed them sometime during the day and they'll be fine. Uh, you can build up habits by feeding them twice a day and, and splitting their food rations so there's not too much food floating around. Uh, but ultimately, it doesn't. if I got to go away for a week, I can put an auto feeder on it and it'll work just fine. Chickens, not so. You Rabbits, not so. Cows, not so. There are animals that need to be moved. They need to be managed. Think about that in your design. You also want to think about in your design the quantity of outputs that you'll need to feed your family and the backup sources. See, you, if you're used to eating all this quality organic food, next thing you go you know you have to go to the grocery store or worse, you have something like COVID and the grocery stores don't actually have a lot of food in them. Uh, what are your alternative choices? Well, that, that comes out to community. Uh, are you able to grow? Are you able to build? Are you able to connect with a community of resources that can get you the things that you need so that your garden can keep going? Perennial plants, for example, is starting to build a plant community on your property, an ecology that keeps building and growing and continuing to produce abundance. A uh, food forest versus a sterile orchard. A sterile orchard is going to require a lot of grass mowing. Uh, it's going to require a lot of day-to-day -day management where a food forest evolves into less and less management over time. Yet, 
an orchard that you're cutting the grass, for example, maybe you're scything out the grass and using that to mulch beds, and then you're periodically running chickens through your orchard, well, that's a stacking of function that allows you to get more from the same amount of space. Uh, there's definitely zoning ordinances to consider. And when you're hiring people, this is another place that I've gotten in trouble. There's uh, local rules and laws. So I have hired uh you know, I'm hiring a handyman service. I make sure that they're licensed, bonded, and insured. I'm hiring staffing agencies, but exterior people looking at the property thought, for one, I had volunteers. Another time, they thought I had hired these people as employees. Uh, and then uh, other times, they were just confused why I had five or six people out here doing jobs. Well, that's because I was, I was managing as a general contractor small teams of individuals to come in and do jobs that I could not handle myself. Um, I'm reaching the realization that I'm getting a little bit older and I realized that uh, all this time sitting in front of a computer and, and doing office work hasn't made my physical presence as strong as it needs to be to work eight hours in a day. So if I bring in some teams of people, split the jobs up in four hours, we can get the same work done as that I might get done in eight hours or that I might get done in two days and we knock it out in a couple blocks, work is done. Those are things to consider. Now, the good news is, is if you have monetary resources coming in, you can start stacking, you can start saving, you can start building up a reserve so that you can make the transition from where you are to where you need to be to have the volume of food necessary to supplement and provide for your family, uh, to have the, the uh, diversity of food, uh, meats, vegetables, fruits, ve uh, fruits and uh, herbs, uh, and then also the plan. Are you willing to write down your plan? I will design and work with clients and draw out plans on paper that reveal to them many hidden challenges that they did not consider. I also know individuals who have sheep and goats and, and cows and chickens and stuff that they don't want to have anymore and that they feel stuck with. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you start a, f a farm, a homestead, or an estate and it turns out not to work for you. Uh, it turns out to be more labor than it's worth, and then it starts to get run down. I know a few people who have bought old mansions and restored them. They bought a property at a very fair price, historical mansion. Their p passion was to the physical restoration of the property, and they have in the back of their mind a dream of a vineyard and an orchard and stuff, but they can't they're so busy with the physical restoration that they can't get the landscaping out of the way and they can't get that taken care of. And they have that mindset that they've got to do the work themselves and they fear hiring people or even having volunteers come in in the, in the sense of a historical context or historical property. Um, my point being is there are a lot of videos online that show you how easy it is to get started with homesteading, how easy it is to have your estate. And then they have these political contexts in it. I want you to look at it and the mere facts. Draw up a plan, think about what you desire, and then look at what is it going to take to keep this property going? What is it going to take for this property to serve your needs as a family while becoming more and more environmentally stable so that you can be self-contained? You can be more sustainable. If you've got questions about this or anything else that we cover, I am Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. I'm a permaculture design consultant with uh, nearly two decades of organic gardening experiences at various capacities. I've worked on a number of ecology projects, uh, forestry land projects. I've managed other environments that gave me skills that I can use in the ecological world. I have a, a fascination by green design and how to actually reduce your energy usage on a property while increasing the lifestyle or the, uh, the comfort level of your property. And I find that gardening is a way that you can reduce, you can burn off stress. You can reduce uh, frustrations and you can actually just get back in touch with nature while creating quality food for your family. If you want this and more, do visit us at www.prosperityhomestead.org. And we share these uh, concepts and ideas for small farms, homesteads, and estates. And again, if you have any questions, visit that www.prosperityhomestead.org. And I'll be more than happy to answer them in a podcast. This has been about thinking about the monetary and the physical contributions that are necessary to maintain that level of your dream, of your desire, so that it can become a reality. Thanks for listening.